Hey there, welcome to the garden. So I'm finally getting around to dealing with these hanging baskets. Um, as you can see, <laughs> not the most success with the hanging baskets down here. So I have, this one was the pepper, upside down pepper hanging basket. I'm gonna go ahead and say this is a fail. Uh, yeah, pretty much a complete fail. And then we've got the other hangy basket that's got the morning glories in it, but the calabacala that I had with the morning glories was actually one of the only things that died while I was away on vacation a few weeks ago. And so that hanging basket doesn't look great. I'll show you that in a second. And then I had this hay rack that wasn't thriving on the fence where it's supposed to be. And I figured, you know what, I'm just going to deconstruct this hay rack. I'm going to probably, uh, I don't know, the morning glory hanging basket, I might just let it continue to do its thing and like pop a different plant in and then we'll redo that one that I was just holding because, um, yeah, I just don't want to have anything that's looking that bad out in the garden right now. I did take out the cucumelons that were in this hay rack and I move them over here. I went ahead and put the cucumelons over here um, onto the arch trellis. I had to move, oh, this is a little fairy garden door. I had to move the still water clematis that I had on this side of the trellis. It's over in my little plant hospital, but it's not doing so great. And everyone's air conditioners are turning on right now. So what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and pull apart these hanging baskets. I'll get them replanted, do a little time lapse so you can see how that goes. And then we will check back in um, once we get the hanging baskets all planted and all of the air conditioners are turned off again and you can actually hear me. So let me go plant those up. Hey there, all right, so it is the next day, um, but I got the hanging baskets replanted and so I will talk you through everything that I did. So first off, I ended up leaving the morning glory vine. I'll show you this, um, just let me, here, put down my headphones. I do like to listen to um, podcasts and music and stuff when I'm out in the garden sometimes. So I often do have uh, my headphones in and I'm just, you know, out here as well as trying to just enjoy the, the silence and everything. But in the summer, when we have all the air conditioners running, sometimes it's nice to just put in headphones and have a podcast or something. But anyways, okay, let me turn around the camera and show you the morning glory. I ended up leaving this morning glory vine in here because I thought it was kind of cool and kind of, you know, fun and wild and had its own look. And then I had forgotten that I had one of these storm burst um, verbena in my front containers and they weren't doing well. They weren't getting quite enough sun. My front yard's really pretty shady. So the verbena, the verbena does like a decent amount of sun. We'll see how it does in these hanging baskets because I don't think these hanging baskets are necessarily full sun but they get a really good chunk of afternoon sunlight so hopefully that'll be enough and this started to open. I also think I tend to take better care of the containers back here because I'm just out here more often and so I tend to like water and fertilize and everything just a little bit better. Um, but anyway so I have this really pretty um, storm burst for Bina in this container and then I just left the morning glory to go crazy and i noticed that actually the pepper in here is starting to really put on flowers and everything so i didn't want to disturb that either i just took out the um the one calabrocoa that had died and i pulled that out and then just popped in the verbena and i'm going to leave this pepper and leave the morning glories and let them continue to <laughs> do their thing and be kind of beautiful and wild and interesting and i'll just let that that and then be i came over here and i popped in it's all a little crazy still but i just trimmed back the easy wave yellow petunia that had been in this hanging basket originally and i put in the kufia this is a vermilionaire kufia so really beautiful plant and it it's kind of the wrong shape right now but it'll start growing into the sunlight more and then i stuck in this extra calabracoa that i had i 
forget what this is like. I think it's like tropical sunset or something, sunset, something tropical variety. But all of those plants now hopefully should kind of flesh out, fill out, and be really beautiful in these hanging baskets. And hopefully the hanging baskets will become a bit more lush and full. Encouraging to see some growth on these peppers because all my other, yeah, hanging basket peppers did not do well. But those ones are doing very nicely and they look really beautiful. And I think once we get the petunias will start blooming and filling out again. And then the vermiliar will kind of turn this way toward the sun and start filling out. And I just, <laughs> I just left the, upside down pepper, but it's completely, yeah, it just died. I'm definitely bummed that that didn't work out. Um, yeah, the upside down pepper was a fail. <laughs> that is such a bummer. I still, I feel like I wanna give it one more shot before I totally write off upside down pepper growing because um, I don't know, there might've been, I, I maybe could have done a little bit more with sunlight. I could have maybe done some more with fertilizer. I feel like there's a lot of potential with these upside down tomatoes, upside down peppers. Maybe maybe I'll try an upside down eggplant next. I It's such a fun concept. And so as I continue to work on my different kind of containers and different designs of containers, it's something I'm gonna keep playing around with. You know, it's we have fails, everyone has fails in the garden. And especially with containers, I have found that these kind of failures, they just happen. There are certain container combinations that just don't work. Um, obviously, you know, hanging baskets is kind of a, a special sort of container situation because it's such a small growing reservoir. So, you know, things like this, sometimes it just doesn't work and you, you kind of need to play around with it a little bit. But I do find that practice also really helps. So the more that I try out different combinations, but anyways, you start to learn what does and doesn't work in a container. And tomatoes are such an excellent tomato variety so I do highly recommend them um, to grow in containers peppers as well but the hanging basket is slightly different so peppers in the hanging basket we'll see if this one pepper that I've got will actually produce um, some some fruit and everything and then I'll kind of be able to tell you a little bit more because although peppers tomatoes eggplants all do super super well in containers they're great for containers the hay rack planters are just so, they dry out so easily that it can be really, really hard to get them to really, um, I don't know, just have enough water that it's consistent for the plants. And every time a plant all the way dries down and starts wilting and then is rehydrating, goes back and forth, that causes um, a lot of stress on the plant and you can have some serious issues. And even though all my other containers did fine, even the calabrachoa that likes wet temp or dry temperatures, I should say. So here we go. Yeah, just don't mind the look of it. It does not look great. Um, <laughs> this is not a very good example of what you can do with a hay rack planter. Again, just it just dries out too quick for me to stay on top of. But we do have a couple um, tomatoes. These are Tiny Tim tomatoes. This is not how a Tiny Tim plant should look. Again, I just, I totally let down the watering and the fertilizing in this container and it looks really bad. I'm going to end up probably pulling these plants here after they're done um, producing this one round of fruit. These are a micro, well like a dwarf tomato. So they're they're terminate style tomato plant but they should be about a foot or two. They're usually a very lush big um, kind of bushy and beautiful uh, tomato plant and they usually produce a slightly larger fruit kind of cherry tomatoes that are really uh, a yummy good kind of you know just traditional red cherry tomato a really good hearty plant and you can see even in these bad conditions they did produce fruit so that's kind of a testament to how tough they are uh, and <laughs> I'm gonna give these to my daughter she's gonna like these and the um, the hay rack planters are like the coke fiber line zero forgiveness you have to be if I had it on drip then it probably would have worked, but I just don't have a drip system set up for that that space. So yeah, <laughs> unless you're really ready to be on top of your game, I would suggest doing something else. While I'm over here, 
Let's just look at the Sunfinity sunflowers because these are growing in a grow from park seed. They are, yes, Sunfinity sunflowers. Kind of like you see these at garden centers and grocery stores and stuff. Um, but they're blooming now and branching out. They got blooms all over them. As I said, yeah, they're growing in a little just grow big grow bag here. 15 gallon grow bag with some queen lime zinnias. Really fun. I'm excited to see that that blooming and it looks nice you know and just look at this not this <laughs> as I said I think I'm gonna be getting rid of those but anyways we will keep you posted on the iterations of the hanging baskets I'll probably trim back this verbena as it continues to grow and flesh out and look good and we'll just keep keep editing it as we garden. go. I actually grew a bunch of violas in those hanging baskets last year. I really like to look at that. It was really fun all winter long um, because for me here in zone 7a, violas bloom all winter. So that was a really awesome planting and I will probably do that again in the fall. All right, everyone's air conditioners are back on. So I will go ahead and talk to you later. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.